Hey, man, I was born in the last century, so, you know, I'm still in the 19th. <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing, Russell, and welcome. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. You know, how about good, uh, good. How, how things going with you? Man, I'll tell you what, man. Oh, boy, uh, oh, you know, busy at times and chilled at times, you know. But uh, uh, we're still living. We're still six feet, six feet above ground. So uh, <laughs> I, I, it's, it's a blessing, no matter whether it's uh, busy or it's tough or it's just uh, easy going. And I agree with that. Love, like, I'm glad you didn't say below. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, regardless of the pains <laughs> and all that stuff, yeah. I mean, Russell, uh, see that you're a candidate for the uh, 2019 Hall of Fame uh, class coming up. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, man, I tell you what, uh, that is truly a blessing. I, 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 I had no idea, and I wasn't, you know, I, I'm the type of guy, I, I played my 10 years, and uh, I, I, I consider myself a good player, you know, but I never did consider myself, I, if, if, if I got selected for the Hall of Fame, I always thought that it would be when I was uh, old and gray, you know, well, I got the gray part down, you know, <laughs> I'm only 49, so... Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, but my good friend, Jim Jeffco, my mentor, the guy who uh, really uh, took hold of me when I when I came to the Dallas Cowboys in 1991, he sent me a text. It was like, congrats. And I'm like, you know, I sent the text back. I'm like, congrats for, for what? Like for your Hall of Fame nomination. And then he sent a, a link, and I pulled up the link, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> he's like, he's telling the truth. So, um it's a it's a blessing it's an honor even to be considered when you look at all the people all the great players that have played all the great the nominees that are, are nominated with me 102 modern era nominee uh, nominated alongside of me i say man what a blessing and uh, uh but it's truly truly an honor and uh hopefully uh i, I can uh I, I can cross the finish line in 2019 <laughs> yeah that would be a good thing i see you one of seven uh, defensive linemen uh who are out there on this uh ride you know, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, incredible. I, I, you know, I'm I'm not sure of all the other guys that are uh, on the on the D line that are uh, that are there, but I know uh, one guy in particular um, was uh, Leroy Glover. Now, Leroy Glover was a uh, a guy that I was under my tutelage when uh, I was at the Raiders. I think he came in. His first year was like '96 or '97. And uh, he came in, and he was a uh, low draft round or maybe undrafted. And uh, I was like, hey, you know, he, he really wanted to work. He was a hard-working cat. I said, you know what, we gonna, I'm going to put you under my wing, just as Jim Jeffco did for me. And uh, it turned out all right for him. So, uh, yeah, he, he's one that, uh, that I'm really pulling for. You're talking about somebody that I'm uh, happy to, for, to be nominated with him. But I'm really, really pulling for him uh, because he's a great guy, great player. Yeah, he, uh, Glover along with uh, Leslie O'Neill, Simeon Rice, uh, uh, Richard Seymour, Neil Smith, and Brian Young. Those are the other guys. Six guys. Oh, guys yeah, there. yeah. You know, Brian Young and I played around the same time. Brian, I want to say, is a coach at the Atlanta Falcons now. I saw him a few weeks ago, really briefly. Oh, and uh, he would tear it up when, uh, you know, when he was with the 49ers, man. We played against each other uh, a couple of times, uh, played some big games against each other, Cowboy 49ers games back in the uh, early mid-90s. Those were some classic games that he and both he and I were part of. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to make sure that I came off the field with better stats than Bryant, you know. <laughs> some, mm. <laughs> some games it, it happened, some games it didn't. But, uh, you, know, uh, th you know, that's one guy. And I want to say that he's, uh, he's from the Chicagoland area also, as well as uh, Simeon Rice. Mm. Uh, you know, so, you know, it's great to be nominated with not just a man, Leroy Glover, but, you know, with Brian Young, who's a baller and uh, from that Chicago area, and also uh, Simeon. So, uh, yeah, th those are some, those are some, uh, some worthy uh, some worthy nominees there. Yeah, well, if you, if you make it across this threshold, you will have made it across all thresholds in football, if I make no mistake. Am I correct? College is in the Miami Hall of Fame, and, and you would yeah. make it in here. Yeah, I guess I guess you can say that. That is uh, that is uh, <laughs> that's the pinnacle right there. Yeah. I mean, you know, once you made it to the NFL Hall of Fame, you were the best of the best. I mean, even making it to the NFL is not a uh, you know, is, is not an easy feat, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but for somebody to say that you were amongst the best to play with the best, uh, then that really uh, you know, 
that that really I can't just I, I I can't begin to fathom what that would mean for me and uh, you know the Maryland family. So uh, I, I I I hope that uh, I can cross that finish line. I hope I can be named in those uh, you know in the annals and have my bust in the in, in Canton uh, you know next year. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, ho- hopefully, all of my Chicago folks are pulling for me. No, definitely. I noticed uh, that they do have a category where, you know, fans, within the last seven, eight years, they uh, allow the fans to come out and vote, you know, for right. candidates. So that's also a possibility of good help there. And, you know, you cannot downplay the, po- uh, the point that you are a cowboy, even though you played for those other teams, you know. You're a cowboy, right. you know. <laughs> so that that would have well, a you lot. You know what? Uh, it was uh – it, you know, it's, it's, it's something to be said as being a cowboy. I mean, uh, you know, the Cowboys are America's team. Now, I know that a lot of people would beg to differ. <laughs> uh, and the Cowboys haven't, uh, haven't won any uh, Super Bowls in, uh, since I was there. But, uh, and that's been a long time. But, uh, you know, the Cowboys do get a lot of press. They get a lot of TV time. Got a lot of TV time when we were winning and uh, still get a lot of TV time even uh, in, in present day. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that that says a lot. But, uh, you know, I, I, I belong and I was happy to be a part of three of your, uh, you know, your classic team, NFL squads, you know, that go way back. You know, the Packers, uh, you know, I spent one year with the Packers in my last year in 2000. And that was a great experience uh, being up there with one of your classic teams, but also with the Oakland Raiders. Uh, I was able to play four years for the Oakland Raiders and, uh, you know, with under – the great Al Davis, <laughs> the, mm. the mysterious Al Davis at times, but the very smart Al Davis. And, uh, you know, I appreciated him coming to get me and uh, as a, you know, when I was uh, a free agent coming from the Cowboys after the 1995 season, after that Super Bowl 30 in 96. So uh, to be able to play for those three teams, I think, uh, if anything, that, that, that may help me uh, cross that finish line, you know, in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I notice when I look at your record here, you start uh, during your ten-year career. I mean, you started 140 games. You're uh, out of 154. That's a pretty good work week. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. You know what? And I took pride in that. You know, I I was a guy that uh, you know that uh, coming out of the University of Miami in 1991, I've been a part of a lot of big games, and I've been truly, truly and properly groomed to uh, to be a player professionally. I was more than ready to hit the uh, professional ranks. Now uh, it was a it was it was a transition in '91. Uh, as as anything, you know, going from uh, amateur to professional ranks. But you know, after have playing the big games at Miami, the uh, you know the playing in a big game wasn't really a thing for me. It was just adjusting. To the speed of the game, you know, we play fast in Miami, but they play fast and are stronger uh, in the NFL every day. You know, in, in Miami, you may have some teams or some players that you play against that maybe aren't as quick or aren't as fast as you are. It's an easy day. Well, in the pros, it's never an easy day. So, um, but you know, coming out of the University of Miami and having Jimmy Johnson and uh, Dennis Erickson as my coaches. There, I think that really properly groomed me for what I was going to be expected to do and how I was going to be expected to perform in the NFL, uh, in the NFL level. And uh, so I, I truly, honestly, owe a lot to uh, those coaches in my University of Miami days and teammates. Yeah, speaking of those two coaches, uh, they were they style much different, uh, uh, Erickson and. Uh, Jimmy Johnson when they when you when they were there in Miami style yeah, yeah for sure Jimmy Johnson's style was uh, always <laughs> bottom line bottom line you know, yeah. it, it, you know just get the job done <laughs> and uh, you know no no excuses no questions asked and either you get the job done or I'll find somebody that can get the job done for you and uh, he he was more of a ruler he ruled with an iron fist but uh, Coach Johnson really had a uh, he was a great manager of men. In that uh, he knew uh, and he worked hard to know what made everybody tick. Each and every person on that team, he knew what made them tick. 
uh, and everybody wasn't, uh, you know, everybody wasn't motivated the same way. Coach Erickson, on the other hand, was also a great coach in that he knew what he had when he came in. We were a Jimmy Johnson team. We were a Jimmy Johnson coach team. He said, well, man, you know, I've inherited pretty much some really, really great players. I'm not going to mess this thing up. But, and then he, he really didn't try to be a Coach Johnson. He just was his, himself. Uh, he was a player's coach, and we knew that coming in. Uh, he'll hug you and love you up and, you know, hey, you know, we're going to get this done, you know, you know, <laughs> you know by hook or crook, you know. And uh, he, he was the type of guy, he didn't really holler at, at you a lot, you know. He, he was a guy that was just kind of a nice, uh, you know, a, a, a nice father figure type of guy. Uh, and those t- those two styles worked. Uh, uh, we said, hey, this guy's a genuine uh, coach, and uh, he didn't try to put on any airs or, or any facades, and uh, we we fell in line uh, and, and won a national championship with him <laughs> in his first year. Right. So yeah. uh, they had very, very differing styles, but uh, they were smart enough to make them both work. Okay, you played in three Super Bowls with the Cowboys. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> uh, did you enjoy all three of them, right? Oh, of course. Hey, <laughs> to, uh, hey to, uh, we get as hard as we worked, and as many games as you play. You know, yeah. some players uh, they get a chance to play in the NFL, but they have never ever tasted, uh, you know, what it means to uh, you know to play the top team in the other conference and to be the, to have that chance to be the best uh, and. I was lucky enough to be able to play in three of them in my second year in the league with the Cowboys, in my third year in the league with the Cowboys, and in my fifth year in the league with the Cowboys. And uh, so I, I, I have was spoiled coming in in my first five years to be able to win three championships. You know, on top of that, after winning two national championships on the collegiate level. So uh, it was really a spoiling thing for me to have uh, – that much success in a 10-year period from 1986 to 1996 uh, to have won five championships. But uh, if people ask me, which one was the best one? Which one was the best one? And I have to honestly say that they all were great, yeah. but the first one was really the one that really stuck out in my mind because it was the first time. It, uh, you know, these young guys uh, were going against the Buffalo Bills team who had been here three time, uh, two times before. And uh, they all expected the Buffalo Bills, uh, Jim Kelly-led team, Thurman Thomas-led team to win. Uh, And with Bruce Smith on the defense, everybody expected those guys to win. And we came and got them. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, In that 1993 Super Bowl. And we did the same thing again in the the following Super Bowl against them uh, in in the Georgia Dome in uh, Super Bowl 28. But then... uh, we had an off year, and as I stated before, the 49ers, they kicked us out of there in the NFC Championship game that next year. But uh, we came back, got after them, and uh, we made it to that big game and played the Steelers. Had the good fortune of playing Neil O'Donnell and the Steelers uh, in Super Bowl 30, and uh, uh, that, that game was good to us. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's been an honor and a blessing to be able to play in the NFL, but more truly an honor and a blessing to be able to have uh, played in and won all three Super Bowls that uh, that I, that I was a part of. And now how many of the guys that you played with in that Super Bowl team have gone on to the Hall of Fame? Oh man! So let's see. We got Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, Emmitt Smith. Uh, Charles Haley on the defensive side. Yep. And, uh, well, he didn't actually play, but uh, he just got inducted to, into the Hall of Fame was Jerry Jones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the owner of the team. So, yeah. Uh, yes, I uh, played with uh, a, a lot of guys that are, are Hall of Famers now and uh, soon to be Hall of Famers. I mean, you look at a guy like Darren Woodson, who's also been nominated, uh, who I played with, uh, with the Cowboys, you look at um, who else is there? You got uh, Daryl Johnston, uh, the fullback for our team. Uh, he, he, you know. Oh, and also Larry Allen, who's uh, that's with, right, Larry uh, Allen. You're right, Larry yeah. Allen. Yes, uh, big, uh, stocky, strong uh, offensive guard that I had to 
privilege of playing against and, and uh, competing against every day in practice, and he kept my my, my skills sharpened from when I was able to, <laughs> you know, it kept me going to be able to compete at a high level uh, against, uh, you know, some of the competitions that I had on the NFL level. So I played with a lot of good ones. Played with a lot of good ones. Talk about the Cowboys being America's team. I always tell folks, I say, well, the reason why they became America's team, they were the first team in the National Football League in the South. So they had the whole South to themselves, even though we had the oh, AFL, yeah. but it was the NFL Indeed. who had the baggage. Indeed. Uh, you know, people, uh, I remember going from city to city. It didn't matter <laughs> if we were playing at RFK Stadium or, you know, going to play the Redskins or we were going, uh, you know, to play in the L.A. Coliseum back in the day, you know, to play against the Oakland Raider team. Uh, we always seem to have a big, big following of cowboy fans uh, that were that met our buses, you know, at the hotels mm-hmm. and were at, and, and, and subsequently came to those games to cheer us on. And it was a phenomenon, phenomenon that I just could not understand. I was like, man, you know, we got so many fans all around the nation. Wherever we go, we had some people that would cheer us on. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that, that that's what uh, being America's team was all about uh, for us and uh, and still to this day and to, to a certain degree. So you, do you have much dealing with the Cowboys today? Are you with the organization yeah. in any way? Mm-hmm. Yeah, still uh, I'm a part of the Cowboys. Uh, there's a Legends program that they have uh, mm-hmm. invited me to be a part of in which I, you know, go to a couple of games and, uh, you know, uh, and uh, have a good time with the fans and interact with the fans in some form or fashion. So, uh, you know, I always enjoy going and playing in the, the big at t Jerry World Stadium. <laughs> yeah, I was going <laughs> to ask you about that <laughs> stadium, big stadium. <laughs> yeah, man. it is a phenomenal stadium. I'll tell you what, it's, uh, I guess they're celebrating 10 years or will be celebrating 10 years pretty quickly here. And mm. it seemed like it has gone you know, just like that. But uh, after having played in the old, a Texas Stadium, you know, the stadium that we, you should have been a dome, but uh, had the hole in the roof so God could see his, his team play, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, you know, to, you know uh, to play in the AT&T Cowboys uh, Jerry World Stadium is, uh, you know, th- that, that stadium could fit, you know, three Texas stadiums. Uh, it's so huge. Uh, and it has a big screen that runs from the 20 to the 20, and uh, there's not, not a bad seat in the house. When you're looking, when you're in the stadium, actually attending a game, you find yourself looking at the screen because it's such, it's so huge, it's right there in front of you, more so than you look at the players on the field. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it, that's what's so incredible about it. It's a great experience, and the Jones family have really outdone themselves uh, when it comes to a football, uh, you know, fan experience. Yeah, well, you know, you're gone from Whitney Young High School yeah. here in Chicago. Uh, and you went to the University of Miami, and you, yeah. end, and you end up with the Cowboys. Pretty good road, huh? Oh, amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I, and just to think, you know, I got my start over there at Skinner Park, you know, in the old Dust Bowl, we called it, you mm-hmm. know, over there, 211 South Laughlin at Whitney Young, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> back in the, the early 80s when I just absolutely hated football and my – father uh you know he really pressed me and made me uh keep going and not quit <laughs> and uh you know i had some uh, great coaching with uh you know the legendary coach gerald prince uh you know and uh and his coaches uh coach george coach telford uh you know coach wallace coach adams all those guys they really kept me going uh during a time that i was really trying to find myself mm-hmm. uh, athletically the, the time that i really didn't have a lot of confidence in myself to be able to go out there day after day and uh, put together a good game of football. But, uh, you know, between those coaches and my father, they never let me quit. And uh, I'm thankful uh, to this day for that. You know, I look back at those years, you know, we're talking almost, wow, 40 years since I started playing uh, organized football. And to look back at those days and say, you know, here's a guy who really hated football, who really wasn't that great of a player coming out and starting out that really didn't show a natural knack for the game. And then to be, all these years later, to be nominated, to be uh, to, to be named as one of the best of all time, 
is uh, is really uh, baffling to me. <laughs> really, it's kind of funny to a certain degree because uh, you know I look back at those days of Whitney Young and uh, you know knowing that we were an academic school and people always talk about all oh, you smart you, know, you smart kids at Whitney Young, smart this and smart that. We weren't really known for our sports, mm-hmm. and uh, but I enjoyed it just the same because of the of the people, the coaches. And the, the the mentors that were there that that kept us uh, that kept me going. So, man, it's uh, that, that that's just a great feeling to look back at that, uh, Mr. Cheatham. I tell you. Yeah, you know, I look at it, and I, I, I'm surprised that you only went to one Pro Bowl. And I'm, I'm just, that's just when you look at it, you said, didn't get to re, doing research on you. I said, oh, I said, hell, I thought maybe he'd gone to more than one, but I know it's a tough job. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I tell you what, um. Hmm. You know, it was just a lot of good. It was a lot of good competition. You know, those years. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was competing against uh, guys like John Randall, who's uh, yeah. already a Hall of Famer. Yeah. He, you know, it's, it's hard to go to a lot of Pro Bowls when you got John Randall going, mm-hmm. to, you know, taking them all. You know, yeah. uh, big Eric Swan. You know, uh, that uh, that was a great player and went to a lot of those Pro Bowls. And uh, you know, Henry Hank Thomas, who uh, played for the, uh, the you know the Patriots. Uh, you know, he could be. Uh, uh, he could be one of those guys, you know, mm-hmm. that could be nominated just as well. So I play with a lot of great defensive line competition. And I think a lot of the reason, too, another part of the reason is, you know, I, when you look at my career, you know, I, I was a guy who was more, my 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 expertise was stopping the run. Yeah. I mean, I really don't think that any there was anybody better that could stop the run than me. And so I didn't have a lot of sack numbers. You know, I would come out and, you know, I would let Leon let. Uh, or Chad Hennings come in and, uh, you know, grab a few third down sacks. And that was fine with me because we were winning. And, uh, you know, that's the type of player I was. I wasn't trying to pad my numbers and, you know, say, uh, you know, stay in the game. You know, uh, you know, Leon Lett was a great pass rusher. Mm-hmm. Chad Hennings was an excellent pass rusher. So, uh, you know, probably better than I was. So if they wanted to come in on third down and harass that quarterback, so be it. So my sack numbers aren't aren't really there. So people look at a lot of that as sack it was sack numbers. They say you know if you don't have a lot of sack numbers, you must not have been a great player. Well, I beg to differ. Right, I agree with that. Yeah. You know, if, if you're especially if you're an outside in, a defensive end, you know you're definitely gonna get a chance to get a lot of sacks when you're inside guy. Like you say, stopping the run, that's a different kind. You know. Oh man, it's uh, hey, you got to bring your lunch. If you want to try to be a guy that's inside and try to make a lot of sacks, you don't really see a lot of nose guards, uh, you know, making sacks. Uh, I played half my career as a nose guard. Yeah. And because, of, just because I could stop the run so well. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> you have to bring a lunch if you want to be in that middle over that ball, mm-hmm. trying to get after, get behind a center and two guards. There you go, two you or know, three people uh, on you every time. To, to that quarterback, but. Uh, you know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, every trip of the train, as my father would say. You know, mm-hmm. you got to go every trip. I remember those days back at Gately Stadium, you know, uh, <laughs> where you know, where my dad would all, I'd be hearing him hollering from the bench, you know. I'm like, uh, you, you got to go every trip of the train, son. And I'm mm-hmm. like, man, dad, would you be quiet? Let me <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, man, I... I I enjoyed every every minute of it, every trip of the train, as my dad says. Yeah. I'm going to ask you one, I guess, a final question here. Uh, now, are you in the Hall of uh, uh, the Ring of Honor there in Dallas? You should be, if you're not. No, not in the Ring of Honor. So that's another thing yeah, that that's, I have. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, another award that I need to grab <laughs> probably before, you know, on my way to the Hall of Fame. But, uh, right. If the Hall of Fame seems fit to... Uh, <laughs> to let me skip that then I, that's okay that's fine with me but uh, you know you got some great players in the, in the Cowboy Ring of Honor oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. guys that I looked up to like oh. Randy White uh, you got Michael Irvin you know the triplets Michael Emmett Troy Charles Haley Darren Woodson uh, man Mel Renfro yeah. Bob Lilly oh yeah I mean the list goes on and on and on so if I could make it to the Cowboys Ring of Honor <laughs> yeah you know, <laughs> that, that would that would suffice me uh, just fine yeah, well, you've done quite well for yourselves. So, what are you doing now for yourself? What are you doing now that uh, football is you out? Know, right now, uh, I've I've done a lot of speaking just by virtue of being in the NFL. Going and people ask me to speak at certain mm-hmm. things, whether it be you know from religious to schools, you know colleges or even corporate. And so, I've, uh, 
I've done it more and more lately, so I said, you know what, I'm going to try to see what I, if I can do this thing for a living and just kind of tell people my story, just like I'm telling you mm-hmm. and your audience, and uh, just tell them how, how, I, how I got over, how I made it, by how I uh, came from humble beginnings on the south side of Chicago uh, by way of Whitney Young, University of Miami, and made it to the you know, professional ranks and uh, was, a, was a, a success, you know. Um, so that's what I've been doing more of. Uh, going around speaking and telling my story. That's a good thing. That's a good living, too. <laughs> it can be. It can be. I have to, uh, <laughs> have to set it up and do it the right way. Yeah. And, uh, that, that, uh, that'll happen. Yeah, you know, getting with, with President Obama, I think they said he and Hillary, they came out and they all got, you know, big dollars <laughs> in this speech. Oh, yeah. So, you know, hey. So well, speaking. hey, I tell you what, you know, you, you get to uh, President Obama, uh, you know, territory. You're doing real well, but uh, you know, President Obama's a smart man. Mm. I don't know if I'm as smart as uh, President Obama, but uh, hey, I got a story to tell. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you got definitely. It. And uh, I can, t- I'm smart <laughs> enough to tell my own story. So, uh, yeah, he's a uh, he's a heck of, he's a heck of a guy, and uh, you know, had the great fortune of t- attending the same school as uh, the first lady, Michelle, with the young. But That's she right. was a couple years ahead of me. Yeah. But uh, I'm still proud to say that she's a Whitney Young Dolphin. Yeah. So anything else you would like to leave us with? Uh, anything you'd like to say special or anything uh, But uh, uh, to the well, audience? I'll I tell you one thing, Mr. Cheatham. I appreciate you and uh, what, you've, uh, been to, what you've been to the Maryland family over the years. Uh, haven't been around when I had my Brussels, Maryland Foundation uh, in the Chicago area. Uh, you coming around and videotaping and uh interviewing me then back when I was a young pup uh, in, the, in the 90s and I had my guys in town you know from the Troy Eggmans to the Tony Tobers the, the Jim Jeffcoats all those guys the Emmett Smith on the south side of Chicago at Gately Stadium uh, I appreciate your, uh, your your help uh, and I appreciate um, just uh, whatever what you brought to me during those years to help me get that word out um, so uh, you and uh uh, Miss Tanita, I really appreciate everything that you guys have done for Russell, Maryland, and, and my family. All right, well, I want to thank you very much, Russell. <coughs> Excuse me for this opportunity, man. It's uh, it's an honor for me to be able to talk to you, and I will post it on my YouTube channel. Uh, I will vote for you. They say uh, you. I think you can vote as many <laughs> as many times you want to. So I will vote. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I, I gotta th- hang up and uh, get the. Get the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, think, I think that's what I think they say you vote more than once, so that's a good thing, too, you know. Okay, all right, well, we'll get that word out. All right, I you, certainly appreciate it. All right, you take good care of yourself, and thank you very much. Okay, you too. All Thanks. right, all right, have a good day now. All right, you too. Bye-bye.